Yo, what's going on guys? Have a here now. Back. Today we're back with some more King God Castle. And I say back because a while ago I got sponsored by them for a portion of a video and I ended up getting addicted to the game, of course. Today though, this entire video is sponsored by them. My goal today is to talk about some starter tips to help you get started. You guys know I love doing these videos, so you already know what it is. Hey, I'm never a pro at games, so I'm gonna give you some starter tips. Before we get started though, I wanted to briefly explain what the game is all about. If you wanna download the game and follow along with us today, Day. I'll leave a link down below so you can download it and uh yeah. So, King Got Castle is a pixel-based tactical defense game where you go up against enemies in a board-style arena. You essentially summon heroes and put them out in the field to defeat the waves of enemies. And in between these waves, you can gather equipment, summon more heroes, combine them to make them stronger, and every now and then you'll have a chance to make deals or trade gold for items. There's a lot of strategy and thinking, and when you play your moves correctly and flawlessly fly through the waves, it's really satisfying. Other than the core gameplay though, of course, there's the barracks to change your deck, upgrade your heroes, and in the main page, quests, challenges, you can complete the stuff for rewards. It's really helpful. That's just the tip of the iceberg. I'm just kind of explaining some of the key features of the game. Luckily, there's an in-game tutorial that takes you through everything and explains it a lot better than I would. Today's focus is some tips I've gathered throughout my time playing that I think others will find incredibly useful. So with that being said, let's get right into it. Let's do this. Use your book of EXP. Okay, this one is a rather small one, but I remember when I started playing, I had no idea that I had loads of EXP books just sitting there piling up. When you click on the book, it seems you can't use it. Like it doesn't do anything. So how do you use these books? And what is it for? Well, it's pretty easy. Just go to the hero you want to use it on in the barrack screen, click on their EXP progress bar, which is the big bar. And at the bottom, you'll see a button that says grant EXP. It will then fill it up just enough for the next level if you have enough. And then voila, upgrade the hero. After this, I even put more on the hero, but it doesn't have to be the same hero. You can back out of that hero and use it on another hero. Another thing to note in this clip here is that at the end, I converted a king's token to EXP. That's not required as these tokens are actually a key item for the awaken later in the game. But since I'm not that far into the game yet, if you choose to convert those tokens to EXP, you can also do that or you can save them all for later. I just thought I'd mention this because if I was wondering the same thing when I started, surely I can help at least one person trying to figure out how to use these EXP books. The auto sort button and auto combine. A lot of people have no idea these signs even exist or that you can tap on them. But in your next match, make sure to try it out because it solves a lot of time and it's aesthetically pleasing. The auto sort basically auto sorts all of your heroes and items. When I started playing, I had to sort all my stuff individually because I had no idea. So I'd be sitting there putting my duplicate heroes together, uh, combining, spacing them out, just organizing, spending a lot of time. I don't know what I was doing, but this auto sorter is incredibly helpful and it does everything for you. Also, the auto combine. Now, if you're just starting to learn the game, I recommend you to learn how to combine. Just kind of get the hang of it first, learn the basics, and then when you get used to it, this button is really helpful. The auto combine is basically what it sounds like. It will combine heroes for you so you don't have to do it. Speaking of buttons that you didn't know worked, <laughs> you don't want to forget about the retreat button, which also acts like a mini menu. There you have some options that may be useful, including retreating the battle altogether, increasing the dismissal area, toggling auto deploy, and even which heroes to auto combine, whether to include the ones on the field or not. Definitely play around with these settings and see what works for you. If you're curious on my settings, I like to keep auto deploy off, the dismissal area to big, and the auto combine to include. That's just what works for me. So once you learn the basics of relics and have a few of them, which one do you use? Well, I can't tell you what to use, that's up to you obviously, but I can help you a little bit. You generally want to look at the main ability it has, plus any other buffs in its place. For my current relic, I have the Armor of the Kingdom, which gives plus 30% protection for armor, but also additional spell power buffs for the slots in this order. This is what works for me, but you'll want to read everything you have. And if for some reason you can't use a relic, like you can't figure it out, why can't I equip it? You might just have the pieces. You need three pieces to actually make the relic in the blacksmith, or one piece plus some magical dust 
if you only have one. You can also combine relics to make them more powerful. That's just the basics in case you were stuck on why you couldn't use a piece, because it's not actually a relic, you have to make it into a relic. Finally, back to the additional buffs, what it appears on the info screen will literally show up in the deck screen. So see this pattern here? We go back to the deck and it's exactly how it is shown. When we change the relic to something else, for example, this attack speed buff at these locations, it now changes. You can literally see the little icons change. I hope I'm making sense, but you guys got this. Trying different decks. It's the most fun and easy way of learning the game. You definitely don't want to stick to the same set of heroes for every match, because you'll never learn how to play the other heroes you have, or learn about the potential they have. I'm currently using this deck. It is very basic because a lot of these are starter heroes, but let me tell you, the ones that I do have are very powerful and I love them. Also because I don't really have a lot, but yeah. I'm getting there. These are the heroes that I think work for me, but every now and then I'll create a new deck with all different cards if I want to get crazy. Or sometimes I'll make the same deck but just change one hero to see if I like that combination better. It's all about trying new heroes, new decks, and seeing what works the best for you. This next tip has to do with the altars. When I started playing, I just kind of put one in each, and every time I level up, I put the new one at a random location. Now, even though spreading them out evenly can provide a more neutral experience, I highly recommend you to read what the altars do and choose what's best for your playstyle. Personally, I put all eight of mine in the altar of heroes, and that may seem odd at first. Like, why put all of them in just one altar? But I actually find it really helpful for the way I like to play, even though I don't have enough to max out that altar. Having my heroes a high level and being able to upgrade them as much as possible during a match is just how I roll. But of course, you can go with the altar of blacksmith for better equipment, greed for a lot of starting gold. It's really up to you. You can even mix two of them and play like that. I recommend trying a setup and playing a few games, see if you like it, and if you don't, then mix it up a bit. Have fun and just find your perfect combination. So as you play through the invasion chapters, you'll notice that you'll eventually start unlocking the same chapters, but in corruption. It takes a little more food to start one of these, but it basically gives you a lot better rewards, but there's a catch. The enemies are harder. Well, that's not really a catch, that's more of a challenge. If you can beat the tougher enemies, you get some pretty beefy rewards. But let me tell you, if you already beat it the normal mode, chances are you can take on the corruption easily. But if you struggled in the normal one, you might want to wait to level up some of your heroes and get more embers and whatnot. But don't be afraid, if you think you got it, start it. If you lose, it is what it is. You don't lose anything other than the food you just put in. So yeah, definitely go back into the chapters and try them in corruption. It's definitely worth your time. Joining an alliance not only opens more features to you, but it also has the chance to give you more rewards. So definitely not something you want to just ignore. They're great for building a connection with others, sharing strategies, receiving and donating hero EXP, and raids. Raids is a competitive group PvP where players have to work together to defeat raid bosses for rewards. The better the alliance does, the more rewards. And you can be a part of it too if you join an alliance. So yeah, scroll through the clans or even make your own if you're wanting to do that. And finally, have fun. It can be easy to get carried away, trying to come up with the best strategy. Trial and error, yada yada. You want to make sure that at the end of the day, you're having fun because that's when you most learn about the game and retain that information. No one learns more about a game when they're not having fun. You want to be immersed and have fun. Don't get lost getting into the specifics. And if you're confused about something, just search it up on YouTube or Reddit and even their official Discord, which I'll link down below. I for sure had to search some stuff and that's why communities like these exist. These people know what they're talking about. So guys, I think that should be it for this small guide, starter guide, whatever you want to call it. Like I said, these are tips that I thought would help me when I started playing, so I'm passing it forward. Like I said in the beginning, if you want to download the game and try it out for yourself, links will be down below. I'm also going to leave a coupon code down below and on screen right now to get three God Scrolls for free. More details will be in the description, of course, but... You definitely don't want to miss it. Once again, I want to thank King God Castle for sponsoring this entire video. Thank you for the opportunity. You guys know I only promote games that I truly believe are fun and I enjoy. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching. Have a good day, out. Peace.